Okay, for this next step, we'll make the mortar spawn. So I will open this. And I gotta bring it over here. Just keeps putting them in my other window. I practiced by making these beforehand so I wouldn't stop in the middle of my recording step to figure out something that wasn't working. All right, so all we're gonna need up here this time is we're just gonna need a collision, a box collision. Click that, and we're gonna type spawn box. You can name it whatever once again, but that's what I'm gonna name it. Um, box extent, box extent. I'm gonna name it, put these 500 by 500, and I'm gonna make this 64. And this will just create a nice area for mortars to randomly spawn within. Uh, we'll compile and save. And one of the other important things that you got to make sure you do is set this to no collision. Otherwise, sometimes the mortars decide that they want to explode in it, and that's not very useful. Um, so we'll set up our variables here, and then we'll get started. So we want to name this first one number of mortars. And this will be an integer. And click it again and we'll make it a float. Um, in case you don't know what an integer is, it's just a full number, so a number that's not a decimal. We'll name this spawn rate. We'll make another one, we'll call it spawn height. Um, this one we won't actually even use in this blueprint, but we'll see how we're going to use it later. And then we're going to make mortar type is what they'll name the other one. Actually, I probably should have put this on the designator, but this works as well. Um, <laughs> sorry to brain fart there a little bit. Um, this one will just type actor. You'll scroll down to this, move over, do a class reference, click that, and then hover over this dot part where you've clicked to change the type and right click, and that'll make it an array. And I actually want to name mortar types to make it a little more clear what it's actually. And then we'll compile and save. Um, so the first thing you want to do is click this, move over here, and you'll see array elements. Click add element. And in this drop down box, we're going to type mortar. And you want to click your mortar here. Next, we'll go to spawn height, and I'm going to make it 3000. Spawn rate. Um, we'll do point 0.2 and then number of mortars we will make 10 by default and then compile and save we go to event graph and now we just have to make a, a custom event again oops and see I clicked off it you can type it in here and there let's call it spawn mortars and then we're going to need something a little different this one. See where it says inputs? Click the plus sign. Take this type here. We're going to click integer. We're going to call this loop number. Oh, excuse me. All right. So i got to look at the skins to make sure i got it all set up. Oh, this isn't bad at all. All right, we're going to drag from this white arrow again. We're going to type branch. And this is basically an if statement if you're familiar with other programming. It just checks the condition and if true it will do this and if false it will do this. Um, so what we're going to do is drag from loop number. You're going to do it less than sign or left caret or whatever you want to call it. And we're going to click the one not less than equals but just less than integer integer. And then we'll hook um, hold down control and hook up number of mortars to the bottom one and connect this boolean to this. So what we're just saying is if the loop number is less than the number of mortars, we're gonna do what it says, and if it's not, we're just gonna destroy actor. And it's gonna destroy itself. So we're gonna drag them true and say spawn actor from class is what you're looking for. Click that. Um, we're gonna click from, see as a spawn transform. That's uh, right there. Make transform is what you want. And we will work on that in a second. I'm just trying to get all the nodes in here. We're going to drag from here and type delay. And then we will hook spawn rate up to the delay. 
and then this is kind of weird but we'll type spawn mortars and this will now call itself at whenever it's done and now we're going to work more from left to right and fix this also under collision handling override on spawn actor we're just going to tell it to always spawn all right so under make transform we want to get a location where to spawn the mortars so what we're going to do is drag in the spawn box from here type world location and you should see uh, get world location you want that and then drag again from it and type get scaled and you want the scale box extent and now drag from either one of these and type random point and you should get random point and bounding box and that's what you want um, get world location should go into the origin and the box extent should go into the box extent and then the return value should connect to the location and make transform so what this is saying is just basically find a random point in the box and we're going to spawn our mortars there um, next we're going to bring in our mortar types here I'm going to move this out of the way a bit so a little more room and from here you want to drag and type get and click this it should be get it should be a copy and then drag again and type last index next what we'll do is I'm just, I'm just reorganizing these can be in any order how you want this just makes it easier to see um, type random integer in range and then what you want to do is um, connect the last index to the maximum number and then plug the return value into get and then connect get to class on your spawn actor so if you have multiple types of mortars you want to use later it will find a random one in that array and then it'll spawn it in um, so we're going to compile and save and then last but not least this is really important otherwise this will this will cause problems it'll drop an infinite amount of mortars so you want to drag from loop number type plus int it should be integer or you can do increment integer but this works too and plug that into loop number and compile and save so what you'll see is whenever I'm going to delete this mortar out of the map we're going to bring the mortar spawn in there we go I'm going to put it kind of higher and then nothing happens <laughs> Okay, so also under begin play, you might want to call spawn mortars. It's a little important. And the loop number here should be zero. Don't type anything in there. And now it'll work. And we'll watch it again. And perfect. So now all we got to do is work on the designator to make that spawn in.